Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and if you're new, a very big welcome to you. My name is Dima Otitu. In this particular video, I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know about relocating to Malta. I have a friend here who is already in Malta and I'm also currently in Malta but for a little vacation. So I decided to, you know, ask her questions how she got here and everything so make sure you watch to the end because all the questions i'm asking or all the questions i'm going to ask will definitely benefit you if this is something you're looking to do and remember you don't this is not a school relocation so let's go so before we go i would like her to introduce herself and yeah so she okay <laughs> hi guys my, <laughs> my name is promise yeah um, chiamaka but you can call me missy okay all right so, so the questions are in no particular order they just came to me i'm like if i want to relocate these are some of the questions i would want answers to so first of all how did you hear about malta and this relocation stuff okay um well i'm just gonna like um say what drove me to even do my research um I started I started researching anything about relocation when I after I got a remote job and um, I looked through some countries but I didn't see any chance of me relocating via work because my work is fully remote but then my friends then started relocating to the UK and all that so I said let me look into UK but it was difficult as well but then I made more research and found out I have some type of visa called digital nomad visa okay. and I checked the countries that accept that that issue that um, after checking I saw a couple of countries which Malta was one of them I chose Malta I didn't just I, ch I checked out Malta I checked out Portugal but eventually I chose Malta first because of some reasons because they speak English here and some other things when you checked Portugal and Malta they were doing the same thing but Malta spoke more English than Portugal right yes. okay so now when you discovered or found out that Malta was doing this how did you go about your application how did you apply okay so first thing I did was um checking uh, the google gave me an email like i searched and i saw this email address that i could use to reach out to the embassy so i just took the email i wrote them i told them yeah i'm from nigeria i want to relocate to malta via digital nomad visa that i had um how was the protocol was the process so like you sent the email they replied you and how how quick was the response so i sent the email today they go back to me today they go back to me with the list of things i needed to gather together and also they gave me the link to their website to check out more stuff i didn't even like everything was clear um, okay. in the email then with the website link um the website should i call it out yeah i'll put it on the screen for them okay and then it will also be in the description yeah. okay so now when they go back to you you said that they gave you a list of things that you needed to like the documents can you like name some of the criteria they listed and the documents they needed for you to be able to apply yeah okay. so actually they they let me they sent me to their website to download some forms it has like i think i submitted three forms okay. that i filled from their website so one of them um, was just about my complete details like my info personal info the second one was like i think about agreement and stuff then the third one was about my um, employment because they have some other criteria like you have to be making up to 2007 euros okay from country different from Malta okay yeah your work shouldn't be Malta because this visa type is about generating like boosting economy so your clients if you're a freelancer or anything your customer should be outside of Malta so and you should be making nothing less than 2,007 euros 2,700 euros yes okay. monthly then I submitted the three forms so one of the forms required me to um, send to my employer to sign and confirm that yeah promise is allowed to work remotely from anywhere and promise makes this monthly and yeah she's an employee here so that was all i needed from my employer they signed it and i sent it back including the other two forms and 
my I added my letter of employment as well but you didn't need to again since I got something from my employer um, um, stating that but I still added my offer letter then um, my CV is okay. needed. Then you have to write statement of intent, just something brief. It's not um, that deep. Yeah. Then your three months bank statements, like recent three months. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I think so that those, was well, okay. And then the requirements are not too much. Just to, just a proof that you are employed, and then you're making less than um, nothing less than two thousand seven hundred euros. Your CV and then letter of intent. Okay. Yeah, sorry, and your passport. Okay. So passport. they will require you to snap all the pages of your passport, both the blank pages and the few pages. They will require okay. you to do that. So that was the first process. So we okay. have second process. Uh, okay, okay. So it was also um, part of my questions, like how long before okay so you've already said that they responded that day so i also wanted to know like so when you provided all these documents that's your passport and everything they wanted how long before they got back to you that oh we've gotten your documents and what was the next step after the submission okay so since i have the email here it's better um i'll screenshot I it and paste it on the screen okay. for them i submitted the um the document the first document 8th of december 2022 so after submitting it, they got back to me um, 19th. So when they got back to me 19th of December, they were they informed me that I didn't submit one more form. Okay. So among the three forms, I forgot to add one. So they told me. So then I added it that day and I sent it to them. So that same day they um, um sent another email that the documents were sufficient. Then I should not wait and stuff. I said okay. So um, then after that, around 22nd, you know Christmas season and all that. So around 22nd, they um, sent me a link because we have to make payments of 300 euros for visa. They say okay. so. Um, they sent me the link and the bank details for that on 22nd. So I made the payments on 23rd or 24th. So that was already Christmas break. So they didn't get back to me again till um, like 28th. Of January? Oh, or, no, of December. Of December. Okay, well, that's fast though. Yeah, they got back to me that they received it. You know, money transfer, uh, international bank transfer. So it took a while. So they received it then 28th of December. So after receiving it, um, 4th of January, they sent my approval. Like they sent my approval that your visa, blah blah blah, has been approved. It has been approved. Mm -hmm. So I need to now move on to the second stage. Oh, that's nice. So I wanted to like ask, I already wrote it down, like how much did it cost? But you've already answered that she had to pay 300 euros for the visa. Is that all the money you paid? Oh, I that was the money for the first process, but okay. I still paid another 300 euros for um for premium visa because my passport had to travel to Malta for stamping and all that. Okay, so don't, don't rush it. So that's the second stage, right? So don't worry. So I wanted to ask, all these things were happening via email. You didn't have to go through any embassy in Nigeria. Not at all. Okay, so you can do it from your home. Let's talk about the second stage. So after the submission and making payments for the visa and they got back to you on the 4th of January telling you that it has been approved, what was the next step? Yeah, okay. So that that um, 4th of January, they said it has been approved. And that was the first approval. They call it um, approval in principle. That okay. was what they called it. Okay. So after that first approval, but they listed all these processes for me before I started the application. So after the first approval, they said I needed to get a lease and health insurance. So that was the two other requirements, like health insurance that covers your stay in Malta okay. and your apartments a lease you get but before then I was already speaking with the people I stay in their apartment now so how to secure my lease and all that so you don't need to pay a lot you just but your lease has to be one year you need to speak with your landlord or whatever to give you a lease that covers that it's not you are not paying for the one year okay. you're just making a deposit um nothing else so i secured that like they sent it to me on fourth to secure that as soon as i can they gave me 30 days to secure it but i secured it within two days because i already started making plans before 
so the health insurance I got, um, the name is Jenki or something. Okay. It's health insurance for digital nomads. Okay. And it's very. It was my um, the landlord here that like, gave me the link. He uh, she asked other people here and they recommended it. They take like either 20, 20 to forty euros. I can't remember monthly. Okay. So for the first month, I just I just paid, and when I paid for that first one, they didn't start taking it. It started counting from the time I would be in Malta, so it didn't start counting immediately. Okay. And with that one month I paid, they gave me one year. Sorry, they gave me two years coverage, oh. health insurance coverage okay. that I could give the embassy. So that okay. was just all. So they gave me the certificate, then my lease from employer, then I sent it to them within two days from fourth so that was around six or seven that i sent it and yeah that was the second process okay so um when you were talking earlier to you said that guys please pardon the um, background noise we needed to use the daylight and the windows are open okay but then you said that the second stage you had to pay an additional 300 what was that Okay, payment. sorry, not second stage, third stage. Oh, okay, third, so there's a third stage. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so the second stage, she had to get a lease, like an apartment where to stay, and then also get an insurance. But then I want to now ask you, how did you even figure out like an apartment you're already talking to the landlord and all this within how many days how did you go about the um, apartment yeah you know when you are interested and excited about some things your response is just you are so <laughs> enthusiastic about yeah, it okay. so i was i went to a group on facebook okay. for experts uh, the group is called Mo experts motor yeah. so just foreigners in motor okay. so they were talking about a lot of things then i also searched um on Google apartments in Malta um, for remote workers and all that so after searching that I saw the apartment like their website Evolve Co-Living then I remember that I see it on Facebook too in that group so I now um, checked it out and what it was all about and I saw that it was for digital nomads like the apartment is like a serviced place for professionals working and their process it was just straightforward. So I said, since this for professionals, I think, yeah, it, it might be worth it. Okay, so once you've um, gotten the lease, you've gotten your health insurance and you sent it to them, what was the next step? Okay, so after sending it to them, they got back to me that week. Yeah, they got back to me that week, maybe on Thursday or so, and they told me they've received it that they will um, get back to me with the response. So that was uh, like Thursday. Then the next Tuesday, they got back to me and they were like, they've approved, my second and final approval has been issued. So they sent me a document containing my approval. That one is now the final approval um, because I've checked all the stuff. But also, let me not forget, if you couldn't get an apartment within that 30 days, they will still give you the 30 days to come to Malta and find, and find everything. Yeah, okay. and find, they, you can just That's get nice. temporal accommodation. Like an Airbnb or hotel. Yes, till you come to Malta okay. and find the apartment, the one year lease is just for before they give you your Malta ID card. Okay. You have to have one year lease. Okay. So okay, that's nice. So in the third stage, this third stage now did you have to pay any money? Okay, yeah. So when they go back to me and say they my final approval is ready, but then I need of course I need my visa stamp. So for that is the final stage. And that final stage is now my premium um, visa. visa process. Okay. So the premium now means that I will have to send my passport to Malta okay. and they will put the visa and, and everything get and, it and get it back. So that's why I had to pay another 300 euros because everything, they are the ones doing everything. It's just your doorstep. They will come there, Pick it they up. use UPS. So they came there and they picked it and took it to Malta. I was tracking it because they sent it to my email that I can track it. So it got to Malta within four days. They did the whole processes and should I continue? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They did the whole processes and, and then I was just tracking it. Then they sent it back and sent me another shipping label to track it again. So the UPS called me again. They came to my doorstep and gave me my passport back. Then it now contained the visa and everything. Mm, that's nice. So they were the ones that sent people to your address. You had to give them your house address where yeah. they could pick it up for you. And then, yeah. so that's very nice. So you said, how long did it take for them to get back your, to send back your passport to you? Yeah, actually, it took a while because um, 
my passport stayed in Malta for two weeks. Okay. It stayed in Malta for almost two weeks because, yeah, it was for two weeks. I didn't know it would take that much because they called it premium, but it did take. Well, it, uh, checking from other countries, this thing is still fast. Yeah, I know. wonder, like, when you said two weeks, it's not. I'm like, <laughs> hello. <laughs> like, some people take, like, months. Yeah. Because, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so, um, they got back to you after two weeks, and then it means that you could now enter Malta whenever yeah. you wanted. Yeah. I want to ask you, like, what currency do they use here? Uh, they use euro. And then how good, like, almost everybody speaks English, right? Yeah. Okay, that's very nice. So, I um, now want to now ask you, like, how has it been so far for you? Do you like the place? What is the environment like? What are the people like? And then what's the weather like? <laughs> okay. Since I came here, even though I took a long route, you know, my friends, they are all in the UK and they all use Qatar Airways. So me, I said, let me use Qatar Airways now. My friends, they all use it. <laughs> so it now made me to, I traveled through Qatar, then from Qatar to Barcelona, then to Malta. Ah, that's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> you get, but I didn't need any transit visa because of course I already had my um, Schengen, Schengen visa. visa. It's type D visa. Even when I was uh, um, in but Nigeria airport, they were like, Where, what are you going to do? I told them vacation. I didn't I don't know. I just told them vacation. Say it's a lie that this this visa type is not vacation. You cannot get ID visa for vacation. Yeah, you can. <laughs> yeah, I said to them, I'm going there for work. What do you want to know? They're just trying to, you know, get some cash from you if you say something so exciting. So um, when I got to Barcelona, they had to stop my passport as well, mm-hmm. but I didn't need any. They said they just they, it's Schengen visa, of course. So then I got to Malta. From the airport, actually, when we were landing, geez, it was as if we were falling in entire water. <laughs> so that was when I know this is really an island, like everywhere. I saw some rocks even before we landed. Then I got to the, um, um, to the, we landed and everything. It, it didn't take time. I just got my luggage and, and took off and I took taxi because my boat and everything I just I said let me take taxi I'm still new yeah then sorry for cutting you short just so you know boat works here as well yeah boat okay. works here Uber e, they have e cab too so okay, so continue um so then I took taxi straight to this house I already got the address and everything everything was already ready so I got here and the place like I said before is full of professionals nobody here is actually from Malta, everybody that from different countries. Yeah. So when I go here, honestly, I started feeling cold immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I started feeling cold. Even though in my head saying, oh, here it's hot, but it's not hot. Yeah, cold. because I'm coming, I'm coming from Berlin, and in Berlin, I'm talking about minus eight degrees, minus nine. And when she came, I asked her what the weather was. She told me 14, 15. I'm like, God, that's hot. Like, <laughs> I'm currently, I'm here now, and the weather is like 19 degrees, and she's telling me it's cold. I'm like, no, this is this is what this is sun. Like, there's no cold. But if you're coming from Nigeria, I can understand why it's it to be cold for you because when I relocated to Berlin as well, and it was 12 degrees, I wanted to go back. The, the weather was terrible for me, right? But when you stay here longer, I think you start getting used to the cold to some extent. So me, I would say for now, I can show you. I will show you guys outside definitely. But like the weather is very cool for me. Yeah, so I apart from the weather. <laughs> apart from the weather, yeah. Um so the cold was not cold bad though, just that I was cold. Every other person it was normal for them but I was cold. But apart from the weather, like it's been really nice here. Really uh, like I came on on a Friday also, I can't remember. But we went for one party immediately. The people here they are kinda lively, you know. <laughs> Even though nah white people dance now <laughs> but they I went for party and people they came out and I've never seen um, like a lot of people like that come out for street party and so they were much celebrating and and like it's so nice and anytime I go to buy stuff they say like hey I like your hair can I touch it how did they make it <laughs> even um, some Japanese they, I, I forgive them because they were learning uh, they can't speak English very well they say is it food <laughs> <laughs> I said these people now nah, last lap I go give you but I just say yeah it's extension but basically yes. here it's nice it's just a small quiet island um 
you can basically go anywhere you want within minutes. So it's really nice. I, I really love it. Okay. So is this something that you would advise someone to do? Definitely. Definitely. I advise anybody that want to um, travel to definitely check out Malta. It's worth coming. So in as much as I know that you've said how amazing it is, are there some like things that you don't also like so far? Yeah, so I'm not used to coming from Niger. I'm not used to um, cars coming from the right ah, side. Okay, they drive you like know? in the UK. Yeah, like in the UK. So when I'm crossing, sometimes I they run, mama. <laughs> <laughs> so that aside, people here, you know, I I, I came from Niger now, so I'm not used to many civilized stuff. But people here, they will say the roads, the pedestrian lanes are too narrow. But basically, the there are lanes that are narrower, yeah, that are narrow. So the even the pedestrian lanes that are so narrow. So you gotta, you know, know how to work. And what else? What else did I say? Um, if you can remember, like I, I, one thing that I, I also wanted to let people know that you told me is that, in as much as is a normal visa, you can't really become a resident here because you're not going to be paying tax, right? So if you're if you're someone who is a freelancer and you're looking for a tax-free place, you can come here, but your visa is a normal visa it cannot be converted i think that when i was discussing with her and we we're talking on the phone she was like oh that she would advise like if you want to get residency maybe try portugal because with portugal i think after five years yeah. you can become a resident. resident yeah so this is just for someone who wants to be a digital nomad someone who wants to you know a new scenery like you want to try a different plan and then another good thing about it though is a schengen visa so you can you have access to over 28 other countries that you can enter without having to apply for visa so like it's very i think it's very very dope it's not so if you're someone who is not looking to get a new um like be, being a resident or you don't want a new passport or something then this is definitely something that you should check out okay. and then the last one which i already know the answer but i just want people to know as well did you use an agent not at all no. Exactly. Why I ask this question is because a lot of times, especially people back in Nigeria, they kind of get deceived that agents do a lot of things, where some agents are actually scammers. I think I'll talk about mine in a different video where I was scammed because I was trying to use an agent to relocate to Berlin. But most things you can actually do yourself online. You don't need any agent. Like I said, and she also had her. She did all these things by herself. She was communicating directly with people in Malta. So I'm going to make sure to leave all the necessary links in the description. And also, whatever question you have that we didn't answer, be sure to leave it in the comments and I will direct the questions to her and she would be sure to answer them. So um, is there any other thing that you feel they need to know? I don't know, maybe I will tell you, you put it down okay. later, but I don't okay. remember. But I think like these questions are all the things that I wrote down and I think we've covered all of them. And yeah, so um, and we're going to, after this video now, we are going to actually tour the city and check out some of the beautiful things. And yeah, so thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please click on the subscribe button. This um, channel is focused mostly on travel and lifestyle. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. Ciao. <laughs>